So from where you sit in Aurora Public Schools, how should we be designing learning experiences that are engaging and relevant? Well, two things really come to mind right away. The first thing is, because I've done libraries um, all 30 years that I've been here. <laughs> sure. Um, and I've seen so many changes along yep. the way, so many. But we're right now, like at the top of a cliff, getting ready to move forward, hopefully. But we have to move away from just print. Mm. And so it's a libraries, and learning spaces don't have to be just in libraries. But we're one of the last big areas left in schools that you could sort of put things in and change things. Because mm. our all of our schools are really overcrowded, and they they use everything possible. So what I'm seeing now is it's no longer just a place where kids come in and consume. They're just not going to come in and take a book or hear a story and go away. They need to be in there doing something, being engaged, different ways. It might be hands-on, something like sewing, or it mm -hmm. might be with technology, but it's something to get them actively involved, to get their brains working is sort of how I, I think of it, that they would do. And so they take the lessons from the books, either whether they're print or digital, and they can apply it to real life. Mm. Because right now we see so many of our kids that live in so many different homes. There's so many, the traditional family is not the only way it is right now. We have students, um, actually this month is uh, um, an awareness month that we're working on with uh, even transgender students, even from preschool on. And so every student really needs to see themselves portrayed in the literature in a positive manner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So taking some of these, it might be biographies, it might just be an awareness. We're all looking at what is their plan for the future. Well, if they don't even know what jobs are out there or what what's different possible. things, what's possible, yes, probably the jobs they're going to take aren't even invented right now. <laughs> but until their world gets opened up, and so that's why I think it's so important to, to just be an awareness. And so those spaces, the library spaces and the sort of those open spaces, are the place for relevancy, the place for that engagement and action for you. Yes, I would hope so, definitely. And we do have some... Um, different islands in our district where we are doing that. Some bright stuff. spots, yes. clearly, yeah. And stuff. So and so, what we have to do is just uh, make everybody aware of it, let everybody else see them, uh, experience them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, last spring at the principals' meeting, uh, one of the things we all did is we broke out into different uh, groups and experienced some different things. Um, watching some of the principals and direct, um, directors work on puzzle boxes, mm -hmm. and they had to work together. Um, and that's interesting, but then they also see the relevancy and, and can take that forward to their school. So um, it's, been, it's been really interesting. Yeah, honestly. and I think one of the questions, and, and I sort of highlighted here with asking about experiences, you are saying that the that the those learning spaces, the library space, um, that they are are places for experiences. And, um, and so what do you think are the most important experiences that can be happening in libraries for kids? Well, things that relate to themselves that mm -hmm. they can pull through. But um, learning about yourself, too. So maybe it's... Uh, doing book reports like we've never seen them before, <laughs> um, not just making a diorama, but taking them, acting out parts or doing things, learning too what they feel good about. Do they feel good about being in front of the camera? Do they want to be the camera person? Um, do they want to write the script? There's so many different things that you could do and experience. Roles you can play. Right, yeah. so that they would feel too like, oh, 
this is what I, I'd like to learn more about this. I'd like to do forward. And, you know, having a place that is no longer quiet, that has a lot of technology, that maybe has a green screen in the back room if you need a quiet shirts sure. to do something, all those things can work. And having uh, different materials there for them to do and to work on, um, you know, electronics, little robots, whatever they come up with is, is great. What I hear is uh, a lot of essentially genuine inquiry that you're talking about, where kids come in and whether guided or on their own, they're researching themselves, they're researching a discipline, uh, something that they are uh, really excited about, whether it's movie making or just making <laughs> in general, right? And so that inquiry process, how do you feel like the adults in that space should be helping to foster that inquiry? Well, they have to be open to let anything happen. Mm. But one piece that we keep forgetting is um, even the feedback, the direction. Um, how did you feel when you did that? What parts did you like? Because, you know, when children go home at night and they say, how was your day? You know, they don't say, boy, I had a good math lesson today. Mm -hmm. um, the things that excite them, that they go home and talk about, and, oh, I learned how to do this, and I did this. So the adults, if they could play a role, too, in sort of pulling from them what did you like about that? What would you like to do more? Did you have an idea? Uh, is there something more you need? Um, mm -hmm. Can we step forward uh, so that it really does solidify in them, you know, what they did? They weren't just playing a game. Right, right, right. Yeah. And so the, the adults have this uh, sort of guidance role, but also to ask those metacognitive questions, to ask, you know, Think, think about your own thinking, about your own uh, learning, you know, what, how can we help you go deeper? Well, you know, too, um, looking at the different age levels and everything, too, having the fifth graders in there at an elementary school and working with first graders or second graders, they could take some of that same role. Yeah. The same way, too, um, at middle school, what's going on. Right now, um, I have been pushing ebooks. I bought the first series of them in 2007. Mm -hmm. um, they sort of tanked, didn't go anywhere, but I kept on. And right now. We didn't I, have a lot of the devices that could read the well, ebooks well, at the it. time. That's it. <laughs> and especially not at home, right. and they don't have access. So, you know, that was sort of understandable. Um, one of the things, of course, off the side, which I'm really good at, is that a lot of the libraries were afraid to push them because they thought they would replace them. Mm. Um, so we sort of ran in. But right now, we're running with Overdrive, and I have two middle schools that are just so excited and want to have more checkouts. And last week, one of the principals announced over the loudspeaker they were first in the district in checks out. And you could hear the kids in the rooms cheering. And um, so, you know, that's a, another step. That's something they apparently needed at a middle school level um, that we've sort of left out. Uh, that That's really interesting in thinking about what are the metrics of, of success, right? And digital checkouts of books is a really interesting metric for kids who are, uh, sort of doing that genuine inquiry, right? Like, because yeah. it, it does require students to go in and make that request, to go in and, and check out in a way that going down and to the, uh, you know, to the library and pulling something off the shelf actually might be easier, but might not be as uh, indicative of someone actually going in and reading. Them. It's almost like they make a vote. What they check out is a vote for what they want. But also... Um, because it's electronic, we're a little um, more open. Um, I have a lot of uh, requests constantly. Every day I get requests for books. We don't get requests for print books. Sometimes they have a box and you can put in a... Right, suggestion. A slip of, yeah. And that didn't... That really <clears throat> doesn't work. But electronically it does. Because you get that instantaneously. It, yes. You know what... Oh, this is what's being requested. This is something that allows for kids to 
um, to get a little bit more of that feedback that they need. Oh, you want this? Let, let's get it then for Then we you. can get it. And I can go in today and see what they're requesting and order it in about two hours. It's on the system, and they'll find it. Um, in November, the, the newest Wimpy Kid book comes out. And I will. They will be put in midnight, right after midnight, right. the night they come out. And by about 10 o'clock, um, they'll all be checked out, and I'll probably buy seven or eight copies. Yeah. So I know they find it. So it's an instant feedback to me that this is what they want to read, but it's also instant feedback to them that I value or we value, and we uh, it, purchase it for them. And what I'm also seeing is very, very diverse books mm -hmm. where... Um, I might not see that in a print collection, but... Um, but you can they, share that collection yes. across all schools. Right. And, and because of that, there's an economy of scale that you're able to create mm -hmm. that allows for the relevancy for each of those individual needs, whether it's a real need that is in one school or it is shared across all schools. But to make it relevant, too, it has to have something about themselves too mm -hmm. in the book that they're seeing and they want to read. And one of the things is our collection, our electronic collection is more diverse. Mm -hmm. And that's something that our district needs terribly is more diverse books. Mm -hmm. um, if you go through most of our collections, um, they're very, um, they haven't changed much over the years. Even though we're buying new books, they really... It's sort of still part of that canon. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, I feel like you definitely have tackled this question. Okay. That's, that's really good. Um, I, I want to ask, though, if there is a, a question that, um, that you think we should be asking and answering for ourselves, that you think, as a district, what is the question... Um, that we should be asking ourselves, or one that you constantly ask and, and try and get an answer to? Well, one of the things in your room is different from most of the offices up here. Okay. Most of the offices that I go into are filled with books. Hmm. Think about down... Okay. Yep. Why don't our students have the same access the same level, the same way that they're immersed in literature. Mm -hmm. um, we've tried a lot of things. Um, why don't we try that again, too? It's just bringing back more literature, more varied literature. Um, and you're talking about classroom libraries I'm now. talking about every kind of libraries. Classroom libraries, a library at home, the li main library. Um, just immerse. All of our educators, usually in the district, you go into any principal's office or anything, and there's always a wall of books. Of course. Why don't my kids have a wall of books, too? So. Yeah, well, and the, I mean, there's huge amounts of research around access to books yes. and number of words and exposure and things like that. And I think that if we were asking, essentially, where are the books? Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, right. where? And, where? It, and it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have to be... Um, just print. Right, right. right. Um, but physical manifestations of our reading culture yes. Yes. is something that I think really does produce a different expectation for kids. It does produce a different um, understanding of we are constantly immersing ourselves in, in words and in, in learning. Mm -hmm. um, and although you can't see it, there's a bookshelf over there. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> oh see? <laughs> but the, uh, the... I have a shelf, too. The, 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 um, but that idea of how can we um, start asking ourselves, what are you reading? What are you writing? You know, in a way that feels authentic for, for everybody. Because that is a, a culture um, that I think we're, we are trying to embrace. Um, but how can we do that more and, and, and better? I really appreciate your time. Thank oh, you so much. Certainly, certainly.